My name's Nick Braun. On this episode of Nick Knows, we're gonna talk about pulse scaling. What is pulse scaling? Well, to take a step back, in previous videos, we've talked about reducing the number of C-naughts. C-naughts are our two qubit interaction, and they have about 1% error. So if we want to efficient, efficiently do any kind of quantum algorithm, it's usually best to reduce the number of this. With pulse scaling, though, we're going to reduce the amount of it. And by that, I mean this C0 is actually represented on superconducting qubits with microwave pulses. Something that looks like this long pulse here, called a cross-resonance pulse, that does our entangling. And then some single qubit gates, maybe before, maybe after, that are relatively efficient. So in the pulse picture, most of the error comes from this large pulse, and this actually represents something that is similar to a C-naught, but it's an RZX interaction. It's a rotation of, the, of pi over 2 in the 2-qubit Hilbert space. And so what we can do, if we want to get less error, if we can, if we have a smaller angle we want to represent, we can scale this pulse from pi over 2 to some other angle, oops, a smaller angle. And we can get a benefit by implementing the smaller angle if it's more efficient. So let's talk about some application of this. I'm thinking in particular of quantum simulation. Quantum simulation means using quantum computers to represent the actual interactions of, of physical natural systems. And often in quantum simulation problems, you have a gate that is called a ZZ because most of the uh, quantum simulations can be broken down in terms of these ZZ gates, which have a circuit representation that looks like this, because it's symmetric. <clears throat> okay, if you want to map this onto a quantum computing hardware that has C naughts, then you would say that this is equal to a C naught, a Z gate, and a C naught. Now, the thing I haven't told you about this is most of the times these things have angles on them. And that means this Z has an angle on it too. So this could be efficiently represented by something called a frame change on our superconducting hardware. So no matter what angle I'm doing here, I'm going to get pi over 2, pi over 2, each one of those with 1% error. But I know I can rewrite this in terms of an RZX gate. So this is actually the same as uh, something that looks like an RZX gate. RZX theta. And then we can turn it into a ZZ by just applying Hadamard's on either side. Now the thing is this angle is usually small, often below, say, pi over 3. So that means in this picture, we're doing pi rotation where we're getting a lot of error, where we only need a smaller amount of entanglement for these problems. So we can get just the amount of entanglement we need by doing a smaller rotation. So this is going to be the better way to implement our circuits. So how do we do this? The first thing we do is something called template optimization. So let's say I have a circuit that looks like this doesn't really matter. And then I have something that looks like our circuit with a Z. So we've got some more X's and an H. Let's throw a T in there for good measure. OK, so say I have a circuit like this. Basically, all template optimization does is it analyzes this circuit and finds the part that looks like it can be replaced by an RZX. So what I'm basically doing is taking this and replacing it with this, or something equivalent. <clears throat> we call it template optimization because there are many templates that you can use to replace things more efficiently. Now, this can be quite time consuming. So you may want to do this to smaller circuits. For example, if you're doing trotterization, you can do it to a single trotter step and then build the circuit out later. So in this way, we have two methods from a newer uh, a newer library called Qiskit Research. K 
his kit dot underscore research dot utils dot convenience conveniently long. <clears throat> uh, we'll provide a link to the source on how to uh, install instructions in the description below. Uh, we'll have two libraries. Import scale CR pulses. and attach CR pulses. So basically, if you have a circuit, say a trotter step of your quantum simulation circuit, you can do scale CR pulses, scale CR pulses to your quantum circuit, or a single, unit, a single trotter step of your quantum circuit. You can put the backend information you need the backend information because each one of these cross resonance pulses is tuned up for different pairs of qubits on different machines. So you need to get the pulse level details from the backend. And then if we have any parameters at the time, we can put those in. But we can also put those in later. So this will give you your scaled quantum circuit. Now, if you're doing a single, a single trotter step, for example, you may wish to do this without binding the parameters and then attach all the trotter steps together. So if you don't want to put the parameters in at this level, you can do the attach CR pulses later because this will work with uh, parameters. And this is for your scaled circuit already because it has RZ axis. So basically this consists of two steps. One is analyzing your circuit, looking for things that can be more efficiently replaced and replacing it with this in the abstract circuit sense. And then the attached CR pulses, or if you provide the parameters to the back end, you will all go ahead and get these, uh, these more efficient, smaller pulses. And so that is quantum simulation with hardware-efficient pulses. I've been your host, Nick Braun. Thanks for watching. <laughs>